Happy holidays, lovelies! In today's special holiday episode, you'll notice we don't have a drink break. That's because we'll be sharing around with some of our favorite podcasts from 2018. So stay tuned to the end, pour yourself a drink, and join us on this extra special Christmas episode. Cue music. What do we become the Star Wars? <laughs> Welcome, we are the Ladies of Strange. I'm Ashley. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rebecca. Thank you for joining us each week as we discuss the history, mystery, and theory of all things questionable, odd, and eerie. I'm not playing footsy with you, I just moved. Oh. I got a little excited. I'm a little jealous that my feet are in my chair. Can I, like, get in on this? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, cheers. Oh, Tiffany's getting excited. Oh, God. (laughs) It's like, we can't even be like five seconds into it. I'm sorry. No, Rebecca, Serious that's face. perfectly acceptable that we're sharing a table and your foot touched mine, and I did not take any sexual connotation out of that. It is I apologize that get I got into together. your this personal make, space. This is making it worse somehow. Can we stop? <laughs> Hashtag poisons. Poisons. <laughs> <Hey! laughs> oh, cheers. I'm still trying to get my feet okay. in on this action. Continue. <laughs> I would say what my poison is, but it's obvious. Right I now. Have to <laughs> my feet are under my bum. I'm done. I'm sorry. Are you good? I'm done. I'm not putting my feet down <laughs> this there. This is why we can't have nice things. How many times have I heard that? Today. <laughs> done. You good? I'm done. My feet are under me. I'm done. I'm not going to try and play footsie with any of you. I accept that none of you want to touch my feet. I'm <laughs> fine. I've moved on. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> I it's just, just funny. Think it's funny. So, what's your poison? My poison is that nobody wants to play footsie with me at this table. <laughs> but, well, that, well, like, that's funny. But that's so funny. Other than that, <laughs> my poison this week is in two days, I go see a doctor and hopefully I will get my like crazy, hectic mood swings under control soon. And I am so excited. Huzzah! Yes. That's so, exciting news. This is very exciting. And I am not going to get political or religious on this podcast. So I will start with not getting political and say that it is super effed up how weird it is to get a, or how um easy, quote unquote, it is to get in touch with a doctor. I'm going to let so, you pause there. Boom. We had a great run of 12 episodes <laughs> of not being political or religious or whatever i think by now our personal opinions are just coming out yeah dude the healthcare system is fudged yeah so but it, it's been fudged for yeah a while. it really has and especially I the mental health system in the <sighs> united states that has always God, been fudged it really has and i am i'm struggling hard yeah. and trying to get help is not easy and thankfully the level of struggle i'm at like i haven't been hit by the struggle bus yet but i'm like running closer. from it yeah i'm running from it pardon the people who have been hit by the struggle bus like you throw one obstacle in front of them and it's like man like this is it i'm done i can't right. keep going i can't imagine trying to get help at that point in your life versus like me where i'm like oh i can push through this obstacle right or maybe this one maybe this one too <laughs> oh my god fine one more yeah like, mm. So that needs to change, but I'm getting help, Yay. and I'm so I'm proud excited, of you. and it's all good. So I'm proud of you. I Thanks. can't wait to so hear happy. how it goes. Hey, Bushmu, I'll Yay. let you know. I know you will. I'm so. excited for you. Woo, woo, woo. That's my poison this woo, week. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, 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 woo. How about woo, you, woo. Ashley? Okay. I guess we're both going to have... Mine's negative, and uh, I debated bringing it up. That's fine. Bring it on, girl. Okay. We're- I'm really sick of people who don't give a shit about other people's feelings. Mm. And when you specifically ask someone not to do, or in this particular case, say something, Mm. and they continue to say it, even after you have tried to politely and calmly explain why they shouldn't. And I'm kind of at a standstill as to what to do with a particular person at work that likes to drop the R word. Ooh. Like it is nothing. They like to use gay as a derogatory term. They just like to throw out, but it's particularly 
the R word Mm -hmm. in situations where it should not be used. Yep. And it's getting to a point, like I said, where I'm not sure what to do at this point because I've asked them like, "Mm, I'm really not comfortable with you using that. Hey, you shouldn't use that. And this is why. Okay, listen, for real, don't use that word around me. And seriously, I told you to fucking stop over the course of like three, four weeks. So it's just one of those where I'm trying not to snap. I'm trying not to make myself the bad person in this situation. And I know that it's a sensitive subject and I work in a very laid back office and approaching things like that can be difficult, but it's at the point now where it needs to be approached. So I'm just kind of dealing with a little bit of internal dilemma on that one and think I'll be discussing it with our HR I was about to ask if you have talked to HR yet. I brought it up. I actually am very close with our HR director. She is actually who got me my current job because we worked together previously. And I brought it up to her like this person, oh, they drive me crazy. But I haven't actually sat down with her and explained the situation. So I think it's time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been my poison lately. That's a fun one because, um, and I say fun very loosely, um, because I've always been the person that is like the HR nightmare when it comes to things I say. I don't know if you guys have picked up on that yet. Um, But (laughs) there are certain lines that I don't think should be crossed. And going to HR when you are that person that everybody's like, oh, Tiffany went Mm -hmm. to HR? Seriously? is tough. Yeah. But again, I've learned my boundaries around certain people. Like there was a previous coworker who was did not enjoy hearing anything that was off color or anything that was even slightly different from her views. And I made it very, or I made a point to avoid saying certain things around her. As yeah. most decent people yeah. would. So I'm very yeah. conscious of the people around me when I say certain things. And I know the people I can joke around with and the people I can't. Mm-hmm. But even when it comes to joking around, there are certain things you don't say. Yeah. And that's why with this person, first couple times I was like, mm-hmm. and I hate to like make excuses, but I work in a very male dominated Southern young mm-hmm. industry and I just kind of rolled my eyes at it. But when it consistently became an issue with mm-hmm. some of these words, I started politely and I don't know how polite I can be anymore because I find it very offensive and it's the same thing because I'm the same one that will sit there and joke with them about inappropriate topics Mm -hmm. but then i'm gonna turn around and say oh because they called someone this all of a sudden it's an issue yeah so it's a fine line but i think it's time that it gets escalated i think that's very fair and i commend you for doing that i well i commend you for approaching that person first and saying hey this makes me a little uncomfortable hey seriously like it makes me uncomfortable hey please stop and then going to your and that's my thing like i have given them more than enough chances and i've also tried to like i said explain to Mm -hmm. them why it bothers me and they just don't care so now it's out of my hands before i do snap (laughs) good (laughs) and it becomes an issue on my behalf not theirs good for you girl but yeah so that's my fun times that i'll probably be setting up a meeting soon Woo 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 fun yeah rebecca rebecca is it time for my poison yes it is. i'm 100 percent prepared for yes you are because you are the prepared one of the group <laughs> shall we talk about um i can things? talk about mental instability some more that's fine i've got this for days <laughs> i can talk about inappropriate slurs mm-hmm. we can just keep it real lighthearted. depression and bigotry Woo! Woo! <laughs> what a fun time oh boy i'm really <laughs> pulling a brain fart hey how about this um while you think about it we can talk about merry christmas happy holidays whatever your celebration merry is merry christmas Kwanzaa that's beautiful thank you you didn't do it <laughs> we are one person i can take credit for her accomplishments i've done it my whole life i could sing my my favorite christmas song for you guys Ooh, what is that it's called my christmas list by Simple Plan. Oh, it's such a good one. It's so not. It's so greedy. And I love it. Santa though. is coming tonight, and I want a car, and I want a life, and I want a first class trip to Hawaii. Hawaii. I want a lifetime supply of Skittles and Slurpees and Eskimo pies. I want a DVD, a big screen TV. So this is a point Just in the holiday me season. Things that I don't need. That I thoroughly become done with the holiday season. Yeah. Because now it's Christmas. And I want everything I 
I just, just can't, can't wait. wait. Yep. That's the whole point of the song. It's no, making, I know. Okay. <laughs> no, I, like, I get the irony of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Irony. So that's, that could be your poison. Yeah. Like, the commercialism. I, okay, there we go. Depression, bigotry, and commercialism. I love. Oh, God, yes. So much for not going political. <laughs> I love Christmas as a kid, but as I'm older, it's just like, ugh. I enjoy it for a couple of days, and then I'm just like, I'm done now. Can I go back but to such hanging gift with my giver and I love it. gift giving? Has something to do with Christmas? Like, no, to, it let's doesn't. be honest, the EMF reader would have happened whether or not it's Christmas. Right? Yes, Barf. absolutely. <clears throat> um, sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> the oomph. The oomph. The oomph. <laughs> Fair. The oomph Frida. The oomph Frida that totally hasn't gone off the entire time we're recording. It's fine. <laughs> the reader that is totally not surrounded by technology. Well, we need to get a little clippy for it and put it or on the not. Wall. But anyway, I agree. When it comes to Christmas, I love everything about Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, commercialismus, commercialismus. Other than the greed and the gift giving, like I love a little bit of gift giving here and there. Like it, if it's something meaningful and special to people you love. But when it comes to like I spent three thousand dollars this year, how much did Ugh. you spend? Not three thousand dollars. Yes, no. no, I have not spent three thousand no. dollars. Um, but when it comes to that aspect of it, I'm like mm, no. But I am the girl that from the day after Thanksgiving until Christmas Day, I wear a Christmas sweater every single day. But that's so. more of what Christmas should be about. It should be about celebration and, and the happiness and, and the cheer. You're not going out and buying gifts and flaunting money. No, I am not because I don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. I love the decorations. I love the outfits. I love the parties. I like the get togethers. I'm not going to lie and tell you I don't like the gifts. We've already discussed your <laughs> your love uh, language is gift giving. Yes. I like receiving them as well. Mm-hmm. But... It's just uh So is this a bad time to bring up my subject, which is related to Christmas? No. Woo, 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 woo. This is a perfect time to bring up your subject. Yes, it is. All right. Are you guys ready for an Icelandic Christmas? An yes. Icelandic Christmas? This sounds fun. Okay. Full Shh. disclosure, I initially started researching this, the Belschnickel. Oh, I know what that's from. Well, it's from, mul- uh, it's not from the office, but that's where I discovered it. <laughs> Let's be honest, that's where most of us discovered it. Yeah. But that's what started me on this rabbit trail, and I found this lovely intertwining stories of multiple stories. I loved it. So hopefully you guys will like it too. I'm excited. Let's go to Iceland for Christmas. So Whoa. first up is the Grela. Yes. The what? The Grela. Okay, here, pause for the cause. <laughs> They're so mad at me. Ugh. I don't care. I'm... I'm- would have done the same thing if I was doing an Icelandic Christmas. You didn't do it for the Asian pronunciations. But I had that sh- on lockdown. <laughs> They're talking about me telling them I'm learning how to pronounce things for my episode as part of research. Yes. Yeah, we got a Snapchat from her that was like, my cat doesn't like when I look up pronunciations for my research. And I'm like, beige, comma. Um, <laughs> Ashley and I did not do this for um, our Norwegian and Asian pronunciations, so I'm irritated too. They're fun to say. Once it, I figured out really how to say them, it really did sound fun though. It okay, continue. Fun. I'm not mad anymore. Just wait; it gets a lot of fun. Okay, so the gorilla. I'm not going to hold it up the entire time. Is a mountain giantess and or troll. So depending on what source you get the story from it changes Mm -hmm. okay um she is also known as the christmas witch and her name loosely translates as growler the growler the growler (laughs) so as far as what she looks like again this changes because this is such an old story and it's passed down you know from like parents to kids and then as kids become parents of their kids it just kind of morphs over time so there's a bunch of different ways they describe what she looks like. So some sources describe her as having horns like goat, hooves, teeth like charcoal, bad nails, low-hanging ears that were fastened to her nose, and a bearded chin. Oh, I'm confused about the ear nose thing, but we're going to continue. <laughs> yeah, I was too, and I did not want to Google Is that. It like I don't either. When people used to wear chains that connected their piercings? I like don't my know, because like, there's some pictures of her where ear lobes are really long, and then some pictures of her with like chains and stuff so i'm like i'm not going down that rabbit hole i'm just explaining fair so just imagine what would you expect a half troll half ogre to look like and that's pretty accurate okay right. that's fair so stories about her show show up as early as the 13th century with tales beginning 
initially as stories told around not necessarily the Christmas season because Christmas is really early, but more like the Icelandic holiday season. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That being said, even before she was tied to the Icelandic holiday, she was more tied to threats in the mountains. Okay. So she's like the big bad gorilla will come and get you. The big bad gorilla? Gorilla. So G-R-Y-L-A. It was a monkey. (laughs) (laughs) It was a troll ogre. Okay, but this is important. Since she wasn't related directly to Christmas at first, she could show up at any time outside of the midwinter celebrations. Oh, no. Gross. No, thank you. (laughs) Ew. (laughs) Okay. One account describes her as, down comes Gorilla from the outer fields with 40 tails, a bag on her back, a sword or knife in her hands, coming to carve out the stomachs of the children who cry for meat during Lent. Oh. Wow. Oh, by the way, this gets a little dark. Damn. (laughs) 40 tails? Yeah. You're not worried about carving out the children's stomach? <laughs> also, sources vary on how many tails she had, by the that's, way. That's what I'd say. That's it's, escalated quickly. It's Lent, so it's fine. <laughs> Just don't cry out for me. Okay. I thought with Lent, though, and I'm sure it depends on where and what religion and everything, but aren't, like, children and pregnant women, isn't that a thing that they're allowed to kind of, like, skew from Lent? Honestly? I have no idea. Okay. So, so if anyone out there in listening land, let us know. We've discussed how we have Catholic listeners, but you did not believe at first. So Believe in Catholics? No, believe that we had Catholic <laughs> listeners. Catholicism is a myth. Hi. Conspiracy theories. Hi. Okay. Anyway. anyway. Stories say her favorite meal is stew made from naughty children. And she is said to have insatiable appetite. Oh, which no. she likes a kid, so she likes to kidnap the children by throwing them into sacks and then taking them to her cave. Okay, so is this her cave the, covered in candy because it sounds like Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. A little bit. I saw some like linkage to that, but nothing super. Okay, down, like, I'm down. They're not directly linked. Cool. They're Again, sisters, this is all like twins. stories that have been passed down by word of right. mouth for like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So like I have like thirty references, but none of them actually line up with each other. All so right. one interesting note is if the children repented of their sins while the gorilla was carrying them to her cave, she released them. Okay. Which oh. I'd like to think was true, but right. again, we don't know. I don't know. Insatiable appetite. I'd be like too late. Right. I'm going to go cook you into stew. So, some interesting facts about her. She did have three hub- three husbands, the first of which she was reported to have eaten. Okay. Fair. No explanation there. She just ate them. And it wasn't until the 17th and 19th century that other characters from the folklore of Iceland became tied to her as her family. Okay. And this is when we come to the Yule Cat. The Yule the w- Cat? Yeah. The Yule Kotrin. Girl, look at the you Yule being Kotrin. prepared. And the Gorilla. It's so much fun to say. I could not. <laughs> okay. So I don't know how I came did not come across the old cat in my lovely episode of Cat, cat. Facts with Rebecca. But Cat, cat Facts, facts with, with Rebecca. Rebecca. Part two. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. So the old cat, again, he was initially a standalone Christmas character until he was directly tied to Gorilla as her cat in the 19th century. Oh. And I'll explain why that <gasps> happened a little later. You're familiar this sort of no. Ooh. Yeah, sort of no. <laughs> Shut up and let sort me of. tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to that. Okay. The cat was said to be larger than a house and on Christmas night would peer into <laughs> the... <laughs> me and Tiffany both just took a scope like we forgot how big a house was. We're like, oh my God. That's a giant okay. okay. cat. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Just, just, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Did you start thinking about pussies? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't even pick up on that one. <sighs> okay. Okay. Big cats continue. So, this cat was said to be larger than a house, and on Christmas night would peer into the houses to see if children have received new clothes for Christmas. If the children have received new clothes, the Yule Cat would move on. If not, the Yule Cat would not only eat their dinner, but also the child. What the hell? (laughs) Wow! That escalated quickly. That's not the kid's fault. Look! It's... Damn! Iceland. It is thought... That the Yule Cat was meant to inspire generosity in children, inspiring them to give clothes to those who are less fortunate than they are. So basically, children who are fortunate enough to have clothes 
get it was to to inspire them to give clothes to those who are less fortunate than they are. So think, can you imagine that guilt though? Like, but I haven't quite outgrown these pants. But if I don't give them away, Timmy's gonna get eaten. My butt looks so good in these, <laughs> but I can't it's be Tiffany. Be- Dude, middle school Tiffany had a pair of pants that rocked. <laughs> Sorry. I'm surprised middle school Tiffany doesn't still have said pants. No. No. I do have a pair of pants from when I was 18, but okay. they're really stretchy. Continue. Okay. Other accounts say that the children had to finish their work on time in order to receive new clothes and not be eaten by the Yule Cat. Damn. So you have to finish your work and then you get new clothes, which you're kind of disappointed <laughs> and about because you want toys. And then you'll not be eaten by a giant cat. But hey, you won't be eaten, so it's fine. I kind of get where this is coming from because like, think about all the American kids that are like, mm, Mom always put socks in my stocking. Like, pinch, I'm saving your life. Mm-hmm. From the giant cat that looks in the window to see, see if you have if new you clothes, clothes or not. Okay, so you appreciate that pullover and you say, thank you, Mom, and go away, kitty. Dude, I would love a pair of socks for Christmas. <laughs> I love socks. Is everything okay, Tiffany? Yeah, no, I just really love I socks. Need socks. <laughs> okay, look. Are you worried about the old cat? Healthcare sucks, but I'm not that bad off yet, so I can afford new socks. I'm All right, fine. everyone, you have five days if you celebrate Christmas. Go buy your loved one socks. Say you're Save welcome. Them from the Yule Cat. You can go get a 20 pack from Walmart and split it up amongst everyone. Your entire Smart. family saved. Easy peasy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So some accounts say that the old cat will eat anyone. People would, some of the stories are directed directly at children, but some of them are just like in general. Anyone who doesn't receive new clothes for Christmas will be eaten by the old cat. Oh no. Oh, shit. So it is thought that the story is meant to inspire hard work during the holidays and has ties to the wool industry. Again, that was <laughs> <laughs> something I was not. Capitalism. <laughs> yeah, again, I had like 50 references, and I'm like, some of them led literally It started nowhere. off so sweet, like, pass your clothes down so your schoolmates don't get eaten, and then it's like, buy new wool. I'm glad yeah, you just started off sweet, because I was like, it started out real morbid with like, I'm going to eat you if you don't get stuff for Ooh. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is that your Yule Cat voice? I'm gonna eat you. It's very angry. <laughs> the Yule Cat in Tiffany's mind smokes a pack a day. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, there's a poem written about the Yule Cat that describes the cat and his job Christmas night and how people work so hard that everyone has received new clothes in time for the holidays. I'll leave a link on the website because it's long and I did not feel like reading it. So basically, Gorilla has a husband and she has a cat. She also has sons. Oh. Called Yolas Wiener. Absolutely. The wiener. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it. That was not Tiffany, just for the record. (laughs) They're called the Yule Lads. They're like 13 tiny Santa Clauses. Stop it. <laughs> no, that just sounds real creepy. Okay, let me... Ex- Is there a Santa blizzard already schemes involved? me out, okay? <laughs> let me... Okay, can I explain, please? Yeah. yeah. All right. The Yule Lads became known as the Children of Grilla by the 17th century and were initially much more creepy than they are today and were often described as bloodthirsty. Told so you. again, this ties to the idea that stories are meant to scare children into obedience. Are you sure this is Icelandic and not German? Yes. Okay. Continue. And Germany's I, got this their seal on Krampus. And I tried to find some of the more bloodthirsty stories and I could not. But I think I'll make up for it in a little bit. Oh, sweet. sweet. Great. Okay. <laughs> so once once or said that when Grilla needed food in the mountains, she would send one of her Yule lads to, to the village for a naughty child to bring them back for stew. Okay. Over time, the Yule lads number would change as to as their names would and what they did. Okay. So let me explain. <laughs> Please do. A little bit. So some stories indicate that the Yule Lads were creatures that lived in a dimension pair of... That's not right. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second, we're jumping dimensions? <laughs> okay, hold All right, on. Tiffany, get your stuff together. Come on. So basically, there were these 13 Yule Lads. And over the years, the stories would change about what they were. Their number, what they did, and what they were. So essentially, a lot of the stories describe them as fairies or hidden people. 
And some people believe that how they worked were they were creatures living in a parallel dimension. And they only became apparent to us during certain times of the year when the dimensions crossed. I know this sounds like the Philadelphia experiment. No, I'm really digging this. <laughs> so this sounds more like the Halloween celebrations, like where the yeah. veils were thinned. And yeah, exactly. Samhain. Wow. Samhain, yeah. I just completely drew a blank on my own topic. No, Who this I really, I really enjoy. So that's one theory, idea, story. I love how we're like fairies and sprites and flying and time travel and magic. Yes, military. Uh, not so much. <laughs> no, no. We have some standards. I am really into fairies and folklore like that. Same. So, so that's what a lot of people believe the Yule Lads were. Were fairies or folklore or hidden people. Okay. There are some stories that said that the Yule Lads were Eve's dirty children that she hid from God, and that after their discovery, God sent them to another fallen world, hence the parallel dimension. Eve's dirty Whoa. or thirty? Dirty. Okay. So again, that was one source that I could not find a whole lot of background information to. Hmm. Again, the whole word of mouth thing through generations. Right. But I thought it was interesting, so I shared it with y'all. No, I like really that a cool. lot. So the final theory of what the Yule Lads are is that they're fallen angels. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Okay. Was... They're not as creepy. You said tiny Santa. Not and... as creepy. I will. At I the will beginning, ex- she said tiny Santa. Santa I will ex- creeps me out. I'll explain how they, how we think that they're tiny Santas now. Okay. Okay. But first, would you guys like to know what they're named and what they do? Yes. The thirteen. There's only thirteen that I could find. Okay. Give Grumpy. me all the names. No, there are only seven Seven. of those. Well, we could continue with more bodily functions. (laughs) Okay, the the reason I was excited about this, because I knew I'd start reading this list and Tiffany would just lose it. So the first one is sheep goat clod, and he tries to suckle ewes in the farmer's sheep sheds. Suckle, like nurse from moms? Yep. Okay. Okay. He tries to nurse from the mommy sheep. The second one is gully gawk. Gully gola island. And he steals foam from the buckets of cow milk. Okay. There is Stubby. I've seen the theme. <laughs> stubby. He's short and he steals food from frying pans. Oh. Okay. Can't relate, Specific. Stubby. <laughs> there is Spoon Liquor. <laughs> Guess what he does? Like spoons. Yep. I feel like there's a Spoon Liquor in German folklore. Yeah, folklore too. That just sounds really familiar to me for some yeah. reason. There's also Pot Scraper, also known as Pot Liquor. Mm-hmm. He steals unwashed pots and licks them clean. Why, thank you. Oh, God. Hot liquor, you come, come to my me. house anytime. Just bring it back after you clean it. And then there is his brother, Bowl Liquor. Yeah, you can come too. He steals the bowls of food from under the bed. Oh, wait, I don't have any bowls of food under my bed. Okay, back in the old days, Icelanders used to sometimes store bowls of food under their bed. Okay. Midnight snack without having to That's get That's exactly feet cold? what the source said. <laughs> I would just put, I would put bowls under my bed if they came back clean. Right. There's also Door Slammer. Oh. Oh, don't be rude. Yeah, that's what he does. He goes around and slams doors and keeps everyone awake. Rude. Oh, what a D. There is Skr Gobbler. Skr! Skr. <laughs> S-K-Y-R. And so Skr is a type of Icelandic yogurt. Oh. Ah. He eats the yogurt. Okay. Does so he have a yeast infection? <laughs> Again, that was not <laughs> Tiffany. I'm good. I don't know. Skr Gobbler. Okay. There is Sausage Swiper. Mm. <laughs> that's a lovely follow-up. <laughs> They're just staring at me and trying not to laugh. <laughs> Skr gobbler and sausage swiper. I hate both of you. You too bad it wasn't. It. Oh sausage. my god! This, <laughs> this is why I I knew I knew <laughs> Tiffany would start laughing. Guess what the next one is? Oh god, I can't even. Ball Win- window peeper. Oh, that's <laughs> awkward. He likes to creep outside windows and sometimes steals the stuff that he sees inside. Look, he here's... must have hung out with Yule Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Peeping toms are creepy, and I have a high standard, or like a low standard for what creepy is. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're not even following up on that one. Next, there is Door Sniffer. <laughs> door Sniffer? Door, like door. He has a huge nose and an insatiable appetite for stolen baked goods. Why so he, he sniffs a... your door to I see guess if there are baked to see goods. If there's... I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I know this sounds like a hodgepodge, but like I really tried. It, no, it's I don't not you. It. I'm just I'm trying enjoying... to figure out yeah. what Icelandic folklore was thinking. After door sniffer, there is meat hook, and he snatches up any meat left out. Meat hook, especially if it's smoked lamb. All he... right. And then finally, there's candle beggar. 
who steals the candles, leaving the children in the dark. Oh, no. The ruler would be very bummed out. If someone <laughs> stole all his candles and ate all his meat. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, that last one's a little creepy. So in the earlier times, they were considered to be much creepier. Again, I tried really hard to find some of the more creepy stories. But today, they're sort of known as like 13 small Santas. Other than the liquors... I wouldn't really want <laughs> any of them in my house. Right. Liquors, you're welcome. You can clean my dishes. The rest of you go somewhere else. So this is why they're thought of 13 small Santas. On the 13 days leading up to Christmas, Icelandic children would leave their shoes on the windowsill. If the children had been good, one of the Yule lads, so there's one for each today, would leave gifts in the children's shoes. If the children had been bad, the Yule lads would leave rotting potatoes in their shoes. Gross. Yeah, I wouldn't want to put my foot in my shoe after there was a rotting potato. I mean, it's not coal. So, being good, if you were... If you have to ask the question, you're not. (laughs) Fair. Dear Santa, define good. (laughs) No, my question is, like, if you were on the line, like, you were a a kid. You caused a little mischief, but for the most part, you were pretty good. Then you just got and a you normal left, potato. Well, if you left <laughs> a <laughs> dirty bowl out for bowl liquor, would that push you over the edge to being good? But bowl liquor wants them from under but the see, bed. But see, those names are part of the older, um, the older stories. Okay. Whereas today, is there's certain known of, like, instead of the 12, day, 12 days of Christmas, there's the 13 Yule Lads, and each night they come and bring got it. either small gifts or rotten potatoes. So instead of an elf on the shelf, you've got 13 Three. creepos that are going to come and give you gifts. 13 creepos <laughs> on the 13th creepo of Christmas. Christmas. The Yule Lad gave to me a rotten potato. <laughs> on the 12th day of Christmas, a Yule Lad gave to me another rotten potato. <laughs> <laughs> By the ninth day of Christmas, I still didn't get my shit together, so they stole the candles from my house. <laughs> So basically, all of these stories were used to terrify children. And in 1746, they were officially banned by the Danes. Oh. Guess what they were banned by? The the Uh, Danes. Danes. The Danes. (laughs) No, no, no. The Danes had a public decree saying that these stories were no good. No No good! (laughs) 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 These stories are no bueno. These stories are no good. So basically, there's a public decree saying you can't use stories to terrify your children into being naughty because these stories had progressed to the point they're like, we have to do something about this. Mm, as a mom. I was just thinking the same <laughs> thing. Mom. I'm going to have to disagree, dames. Okay. So these stories were banned in the 1700s, and they eventually came back into popularity in the 1900s. And that was when... Gorilla became a mother, and they had a cat, and 13 sons, oh. and a third husband. So they, because, they toned it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, the first two husbands were a little cray, but that third one calmed her down. Well, the first one got eaten. Well, I mean, he was a little cray, so he got eaten. I wonder if the first one was responsible for the 13 children. Fair. If you if you give me 13 children, I'm, I'm probably just going to, like, not find out. sources on that. Yeah, because if I the first know. one was one that was responsible for all the Yule lads, I might eat you, too. <laughs> <laughs> So that is my short but concise history on Icelandic Christmas. Da, 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 da. Da. Random will... ramblings with Rebecca. Pretty much. <laughs> I like it. Full circle. I've never heard of any. Like I said, there's right? spoon liquor and bowl liquor and door sniffer. That candle Well, snatcher. no, I'm saying sp- spoon liquor. I feel like I've heard that one before. But other than that. And they, yeah, had, they all snatcher. had Icelandic names, which after... <laughs> learning the first three i was like i'm done spoon of liquor sorry sorry guys I don't think that's accurate actually. that's not no Kindle snatcher. there's actually there was a name for the husband that i copied pasted into google and asked like name translation and it, google just said okay. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> it, it, even google could not help me i don't mean to be insulting to any cultures but it has symbols i've never seen before do you have it yeah, it's the one that starts with L. Uh, it's L E P P A thingy J? thingy 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 thingy. J at the bottom. The that's Yolokotorin. That's the name uh, of the Yolkat. Uh, silly me. Obviously. So this one it starts with L. Lepaluos. Nope. Lepaluos. Lep- like I said, I don't know. 
All I, 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 I yeah, no clue. Um, yeah, like a, that, like a loop, that J loop word loop. is what she was talking about. What? How pr- pronounce the J one again? Yolokotren. That is not what I would have guessed. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> kudos. How exciting! So, if you guys are tired of celebrating Santa Claus, you now have three new stories to talk about and scare your children yes. into submission. Whoa, 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 whoa! I feel like there are a lot of maybe this is jump, dumb American speaking, but um, I feel like there are a lot of European folklore around the holidays that's yeah. very scary. Yeah. yeah, there is, and I actually had to narrow it down because I yeah. found a bunch of them, <clears throat> and then I found a couple that came from the same region, which led me to an Icelandic Christmas. Icelandic Christmas. Isn't it flip-flopped, too? Like, isn't Iceland actually really pretty, and then Greenland is the cold? Yes. Yep. So you would think that it would be a Greenland Christmas for some reason. That just seems scarier to me. Eh. I don't know. <laughs> Even though Iceland is supposed to be, like, prettier than Greenland, I, I still hear Iceland, and I'm like, oh, I feel frigid, and not anything against it. I'm sure it's a beautiful country. It's just the name makes it sound well, cold. That's why they did and that. gross and scary. <laughs> I mean, their folklore on Christmas is a little morbid. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Fair. But I like it. <clears throat> yeah. The candle snatcher is the one that kind of bothered me. But the rest of them sounded like just friendly people who were coming by to like clean oh, up your Oh, and the ish. peeping Tom. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. like peeping Toms. But... Yeah, the peeper and the snatcher. <laughs> 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 and we're there. <laughs> we're all 12-year-olds. Ashley's... I'm sorry, Iceland. If Ashley's... you listen, you... thank you. And please don't leave. Please don't. Never mind the fact that Ashley is beet red and hiding in her hands. You good? Nope. (laughs) She is not. Again, I thought it would be Tiffany who'd be doing this. The best ones are when you don't even realize what you're saying until it's already out. (sighs) Those two were definitely the worst out of all of them. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) And a happy. (laughs) <laughs> well, we'll see you guys. Talk to you before the new year. We will. Yes. Oh, that was good. Yes, ma'am. Jolly good. Jolly, jolly And now good. I know three words, sort of, in Icelandic. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. The Yule... The Gorilla. Gorilla. And Not the, Gorilla. <laughs> gorilla. And then the Yule Cat, which is Yolokotren. Yolokotren. And then the Yule Lads, which I know you're waiting for me to say, which is... Yola's Vena. <laughs> Say it one more time. Yola's Vena. Yola's Vena. Yola Wiener. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Again, that was Ashley. <laughs> I have not said Wiener once until now. <laughs> <laughs> Just said it. But I couldn't pass up that opportunity. Peeper Snatcher. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. Go tell your family about the Peeper and the Snatcher. <laughs> or or not and the yolo wieners <laughs> see this is how stories get misconstrued over time. you mean like the philadelphia experiment exactly what are you talking about that was legitimate where were you confused in I the mean, philadelphia experiment how long do you have you uh, have about an hour 20 do you want to go back <laughs> over the whole thing again al Bielik can explain it all for you like well, you could literally could stop it dead. at any point in that episode and i'm confused yeah fair anyway yeah Icelandic christmas, Icelandic da, christmas. Da, 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 da. good job rebecca it's not creepy but it's kind of cool i mean i mean the part about eating children and staring in windows and snatching Slicing candles over their stomachs <laughs> Never mind, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's not bit. creepy unless you consider this. But this, I mean, this, let's this be real this. here. What's not creepy about an old man breaking into your house and like watching over your children? Full disclosure, the elf on the shelf thing scares me. <laughs> we have one. We I, just got one this year. I, I know. <laughs> I just, the whole Santa thing has always kind of skeeved me out and then like I'm sitting on my lap. I, how Fair. old were you guys whenever you um, discovered? In my family, if you don't believe, you don't receive. So creepy ass Santa Claus is alive and well in my house. <laughs> we never celebrated Santa. Uh-huh. Fair. I love how y'all just like unquestionably accept that. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, you guys are super smart. Super, super smart. So I can't see, like, trying to pass off Santa in your house. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> you guys are too smart for Santa. <laughs> well, see, I remember asking my mom, like, when I was, like, maybe 13 or 14, like, hey, why why did y'all never, like, try to do the whole Santa thing? And my parents were like, my mom was like, well, we didn't especially enjoy it as kids. I mean, it was there, but we didn't, like, really get into it on top of that. I want credit for your gifts. There you go. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's kind of a fine line. I've walked with little man, like I said, growing up with us, if you didn't, it's more so with my older siblings because my parents wanted to keep it mm-hmm. going for me. But it was, if you don't believe, you don't receive. So basically keep your mouth shut or you're not getting anything. But I walk a fine line with little man on how much I want to push it because... I don't want to go through that, like, travesty of him finding out. Oh, you mean, like, being in fifth grade and fighting with all your peers and saying Santa is real and you guys aren't getting gifts, and then your dad sitting you down and letting you read a story where the child in the story finds out Santa isn't real, and then you cry your eyes out for, like, an hour? Did this happen? Not speaking from personal experience here. (laughs) Still a little bitter, but it's fine. Should we stop recording and talk for a little bit? (laughs) Do I'm going to go through that on Thursday. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not meaning to laugh at you. No, it is. It is hilarious. No, I, I'm i the same boat. Like when baby girl's old enough to kind of understand what's going up, I want her to experience the Santa thing because right. it was fun for me and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I also don't want to like, it's a fine line, yeah. like you said. I don't want it to be too extreme. And I have a friend who, I won't say her name, but I remember she was telling us about when she discovered Santa wasn't real. And when her mom told her, she was like, oh, okay, so, like, the Easter bunny and the tooth fairy, and she's like, yeah, no, those aren't real either, and she's, so, uh, what about, like, when are you guys going to tell me that God isn't real? And her mom oh, slapped her in the face, and she oh. was like, oh, okay, sorry. So, huh. like, there are things, like, it's it's a fine line, and I don't yeah. want to have those conversations. Well, with the whole Santa thing, I came across oh, something. Oh, the tooth fairy is 100% real. So, with the whole Santa <laughs> thing... <laughs> All right, Tiffany, (laughs) calm down. (laughs) I came across something, I think, on Facebook a while back about, like, when the time comes and how you basically just say, like, well, Santa's not a person. Mm -hmm. Santa is, like, a spirit in a state of being. So, like, anyone can be a Santa. It's about giving and loving and compassion. It's not necessarily Santa being one all holy whatever not holy because it's not a religious thing but almighty being omniscient omnipotent omnipotent yeah that's the word one large creepy man (laughs) (laughs) but it's about giving and loving and caring and all the things that the holidays are supposed to be about and how the child can now become a santa yes and how the child will now become a santa and they can start volunteering and so kind of like that one i'll table that one for the back of my mind when the time comes. That's sweet. I have a feeling little man's going to be like Haggard and he's going to be like, Mom, duh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I kept this going for you. I feel like that's how my brothers were. I don't even remember when my 25-year-old brother, when he found out that Santa wasn't real. And I don't think they've told my 10-year-old brother yet, but I was 10 when I found out. So I feel like it's coming. But I feel like they would both be the kind that are like, yeah. And do I still get presents from him? Right. <laughs> so. so I don't get less gifts now because the gifts stay the same, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, okay. Cool. No cool. problem. No problem. Got it. And then 10-year-old t- Tiffany like bawled her eyes out for way too long over it and got, what's the word? None of my peers liked me because we got into huge fights over Santa. So now none, of, now none of my peers like me because I am who I am. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it started at 11. And it's just gone downhill from there. Uh-huh. Hey, when did we become friends? Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's same time frame. Sweet. You're welcome. Well, this got awkward. Always. It's fine. Welcome well, to the ladies of awkward. What would it be if it didn't get awkward at least once? Every 10 minutes. Fair. 10 minutes? I mean, we sometimes, I'm sure there's a stretch of 10 minutes <laughs> where we didn't get awkward. Somewhere. Pre or post edit. <laughs> exactly. Well, remember, <laughs> friends. <laughs> Everyone has something that they find odd. Let us tell you why it's not. If you have any questionable topics you'd like us to discuss, you can share them with us on any of our social medias. You can also wish Tiffany a Merry Christmas. Woo, 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 woo. Links can be found on our website, theladiesestrange.com. Or you can email them to us at theladiesestrange at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. And if you think we're doing a great job and want to support us, you can now find us on Patreon. Keep it strange, lovelies. Happy Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, everything Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. And Happy Holidays. Woohoo. I think we were only like 10% less cool than NSYNC in that. 
what? <laughs> Ending there. <laughs> Got my drinks. Got my drinks. Cheers. Oh, hold on. Let me use the glass one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I'm not Cheers. double fisting. Cheers. All right. Happy holidays. Happy New Year's and holidays and existential crises. Huzzah. Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> Here's to 2019 having less of those, I hope. I hope. I hope. They should. They will. They will. <laughs> That's a spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know what might help with that? Shouting out some of our favorite podcasts. Let's do it. Yeah. Woo. Let's share some love and bring in good karma for 2019. Well, uh, let's see. So as everyone listening knows, we recently started our show about two months ago. Ish. Oh, look, going on three. Yes, It'll three. Be three in January. Yep. Blech. And uh, of course, being podcasters, we enjoy podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Otherwise, and we're in the wrong field, I've, right? I've heard of podcasts before. <laughs> what did you say? A podcast? Where can I watch that? <laughs> can I YouTube that? Can well, Some. You can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Fair. And of course, we all have our uh, our standard favorites, but we've all recently kind of discovered some new ones that we really, really enjoy. So we wanted to share some love mm-hmm. and just take a minute to uh, shout them out and talk about them and share the love. I think I already said that. That's okay. You're not double Where fisting. Is the love? Sharing the love is important. So it we is. can mention it three or four times. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Share Absolutely. the love. Share the love. Where is the love? It's right here. You want to start us off? I'll start love it Meister. Off. Oh. <clears throat> so in, <laughs> in my box of love with a pretty little bow, open my box with a pretty little bow, and out pops Shannon and Corey from Snafood. <gasps> Well, hello, Shannon and Corey from Snafood. Hello, guys. They're so cute. I just <laughs> want to pinch their cheeks. But I'm not going to because they're in Florida and we're in Georgia. And not in a box wrapped as a gift. Oh, wait. Yeah, they're in a box wrapped as a gift no, right now. No, they just popped so, out. Yeah. Pinchy pinch. <laughs> <laughs> but they're wonderful. They are. We love y'all. Please keep supporting us. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't let me turn you away. They're wonderful. You should give them a listen. They like to talk about stories that you would think are false but actually happen to be true what is their tagline situation, situation normal, normal all fucked up. up that's what snafu stands yeah. for i just learned I that it. this week <laughs> <laughs> i was like why did, why is that their tagline i mean it makes sense but that's why kudos ravenclaw had to explain it um hey i'm <clears throat> proud at least you learned something this week i did uh so you should check them out they're wonderful and always a good time so that's my box of love Rebecca, what's in I don't your box a, of love? I don't have a box. I have a shout out. Um, <laughs> oh. Rebecca doesn't want to play along with your love box. <laughs> Hi. All right. I'm so sorry. Weird and wonderful West Virginia, but you're following this. Um, <laughs> he pops out the stocking. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Didn't mean it like that. Sorry, honey. <laughs> okay. So I, I love this podcast. I love the stories. I love the detail he goes into. It's the, the way he edits it. The music's super calming. It just it just makes me happy, even though the stories are kind of dark and sometimes not great. I love it. But I it's so good. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And he's also a co-host, co-host of another show, Paycheck and Red. Which is also a lot yes. of fun. Which is fantastic. Yes. So big I, shout out to him. Highly yes. recommend. Absolutely. Yes. Ashley, do you have a box or a stocking? I have one of those big, like, bicycle bags. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Did you and steal it from Santa? Holographic. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from the Yulikotarin. <laughs> the Yulikotarin? Yep, that yep. one. That one. <laughs> the Yule Cat. Uh-huh. <laughs> the Yule Cat didn't have a bag. Are you talking about the Grela? No. The Yule Cat had a bag that he carried on his back when he was peeping into houses. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not quite. But we literally just did that. The point <laughs> inside my giant holographic bag of wonder okay. is I said, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is another oh. uh, female run and operated podcast. It's Compound run work. by two friends, Stacy and Aaron. And um, they cover, I think, mostly true crime, but I'll just say weird, questionable stories throughout Fun. history. Fun. Stuff. And uh, I really like their vibe. It kind of seems similar to what we got going on here. 
and they just seem like really cool girls and they're doing a great job. So they've been really fun to listen to and work with. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. I'm excited to uh, see what else we can do in 2019. Woo, 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 woo. So uh, guys, now that you've opened up our presence of love, go check out those podcasts. They're yes. wonderful. And for some podcasts that got us into podcasting, yes. we wanted to shout out some also what I guess people would consider quote unquote bigger podcasts mm-hmm. that have kind of influenced us and either influenced us to start our own show or has just helped us yes in real life. So shall Agreed. we bring this back around, Tiffany? You want to kick us off again? Let's bring it around town. All right. Bring it around. Mm -hmm. so i've already used up my box there's sorry there's a stocking and a big holographic bag we're gonna take it outside instead of a big shiny car with a gigantic bow there's a gigantic bow sitting on top of Stephen Pappas and Chris Grimmett. And they're really cold because they're from North Carolina and don't like the cold. Right. So we're going to bring but, them on inside. Yeah, but we're from the South, too. Yeah, so we're in Georgia. But sometimes it gets cold. It probably so, gets a lot so colder North in North Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> so. You're cute. We're, thank you, honey. We're two gonna, sweet, sweet boys sitting in our driveway. <laughs> we're going to bring those two inside. And we're going to talk about Is This Adulting? Is This Adulting is a mental health podcast, comedy podcast. It is two best friends who... Um, Navigate adulthood as overgrown men child, man children, and they're magnificent. They are very honest about their mental health struggles, um, but they're very lighthearted and fun. They know how to get real, but they also know how to keep things lively, and I just really love them. And when I'm having my issues, like I go to their podcast and yeah. just listen, and it makes me feel like I'm not alone. It makes me chipper. Sometimes when I want to be down, I listen to their Real Talk episodes, yes. and I'm like, good, somebody else feels the way I feel. <laughs> I'm going to go have a cry day now. Thanks, yeah. guys. So anything you need, they've got it. And then they play fun games. And not going to lie, Chris Grimmett, um, if you ever wanted to hang out, I think we're spirit animals, and uh, yeah. we'd be best friends. So you're each other's spirit animals? We yes. are. Okay. <laughs> it's just residual spirit animal link. Yeah. So. He just doesn't know mm. it yet. But he will. Oh, he will. Oh, he will. Vision board 2019. (laughs) So, Rebecca, what kind of present are we getting from you? So, okay. Um, (laughs) I'm that person who, like, I love y'all, but it definitely gets put in a brown paper bag before I hand it to (laughs) y'all. Crap, crap. I'm supposed to wrap this. If I remember to wrap it, but out of the brown paper bag, appropriately, is and that's why we drink. (laughs) So, I know, Rebecca, this is one of the first podcasts I ever started listening to. My first. And stop making that face, Tiffany. Um, Not a bad first to have. They probably set the bar pretty high. Moving on. Um, And I know that's something, that's a podcast we all listen to. Mm -hmm. We've gone to see a live show of, and they've inspired us incredibly to go out and do our own thing. Yep. Yes. Cover strange things. And be okay with it. Yes. And And (laughs) Em gives the best hugs ever, just hands down, putting it out there. Yep. I could I, I could have gone for an M hug this past week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, and that's why we drink. Come to Georgia, please, and thank you. Yes. Spread the love and the hugs. <laughs> Sorry to Bogart here. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's it's fine. I'm just not a hugger. I'll give you a high five. I'm not normally a hugger Sorry. either, but I was super super excited to meet them, and then they gave me a hug, and I was like, it doesn't help that I might have a just, little crush. Little crush. <laughs> no big deal. Schematics. <laughs> and they give really, really good hugs. Like, and Christine is adorable. Oh, my and, God. She's, uh, she's wonderful. She's just happy. And yes. Meanwhile, while they're hanging out with Christine and Em, I'm like, hey, Eva, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah. highly, highly, highly recommend. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And to cap us off inside of one of those rectangular, skinny, bags Ooh, yes it generally holds a bottle of wine mayhaps 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 maybe a little champagne champagne no. a little fizzy bubbly <laughs> y'all maybe. <are> so classy <laughs> <laughs> is none other than the ladies of wine, wine and crime, crime. Oh. talk about a show that mm. has helped me be like you know what fuck it this is who i am this is how I feel about the situation, and I'm going to put it out there. Mm-hmm. And they were the first big podcast 
to actually respond to any of our reach outs. They were like and... one of the first podcasts to respond mm-hmm. to our reach outs. Mm-hmm. And... Which once they did, we had to scrape Tiffany off the floor. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, puddled Tiffany kind too. of puddled. Mm-hmm. And then Amanda interacted with her on Twitter and they're basically dating oh now. Oh my God. So when I found out <laughs> the day that our episode aired with their promo in it, Rebecca texted me and was like, your voices are on the same track today. And I was like, yeah, I know we're basically dating. So I took a screenshot of it and posted it on Twitter. And not only did she like it, she retweeted it. So we are dating. Yeah. And I had to have a talk with my husband. So. And that's when she became a puddle for three days. <laughs> three day puddle I of Tiffany them on so the floor. I much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our little, I wish we had time to seriously thank everybody who has been supportive and helpful and shared and retweeted and listened to episodes and spread the love. It's amazing. But the podcast community is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if anyone out there listening has contemplated starting a podcast or any other project, just do it. Do it. Why not? Just go into it with the mentality of I'm doing this for myself or we are doing this for us. If there's multiple friends or family or whoever that wants to do it, just do it. Make that your goal for 2019. Whether you record one episode or you keep it going forever, Mm -hmm. just do it. But hopefully maybe we can be on somebody's holiday list next year. (laughs) Oh, that would be so much fun. Tiffany would love being... (laughs) Wrapped in a bow. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Put Tiffany on the cold driveway with the giant bow on her head in your show, and she'll be so happy. Please. Please, <laughs> please. I love you all. I really do. But if you put a big shiny bow on my head, I'll love you the most. The most? The most. That's all it takes? I mean, how do you think Matthew got me? All right. So the after. Big shiny bow. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's called a bow, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers, cheers to guys. everyone. Cheers to the new year and cheers to the ladies of Strange. Woo! Cheers. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. We love you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.